So uh, Neighborhoods Day is coming up as it does every year. It is a different year than any year that any of us has probably- Say the made, least. Right? Uh, so I imagine that Neighborhoods Day has to take on a really different uh, tenor this year. Talk about, uh, talk about what that will look like for us. Well, it, it did because back in March, Steve, uh, myself and our board, we didn't think we were gonna be able to have a Neighborhoods Day because quite frankly, our traditional funding had dried up to a great degree. Uh, we knew what the health situation was and uh, we really didn't know, but we think we, after some thought and, and planning and with a few uh, sponsors stepping forward to make it possible, uh, we decided that we could do a neighborhood today, but redesign it in a way that emphasizes safety, but also emphasizes the fact that we spent 13 years building what we think is an iconic event, unlike any in any city in the nation, get involving people in neighborhoods, but how can we do it a day that's predicated on people coming together at a time where we're told to stay apart, stay safe, wear masks. But we kind of, I think we come up with that. And uh, our model for this Neighborhoods Day, our 14th annual, which is August the 1st, is stay safe, create in your space. Stay safe, create in your space. So what we've had people do is to move your festivals, move your concerts, move your art projects, move them to your house, move them to your front porch, your front lawn, to the driveway. And if you're gonna do a beautification and clean up projects, keep them small, 10 people or less. Uh, wear your uh, protect, protective materials, social distance, keep all that in mind. And we think, we, in fact, we know uh, that we've got something that the community has responded. We already had, we have, we've had uh, over 70 registrations from community groups and that, that may sound like a lot, but the last few years we've been averaging over 200. Mm -hmm. But in this environment, it's really amazing. We had been getting calls earlier this year, but are you going to have Neighborhoods Day? Are you going to have Neighborhoods Day? And so we're very gratified that a lot of community groups have stepped up, they've registered, and we're really looking through August the 1st uh, to a new and exciting way of, uh, of uh, showing, uh, displaying Neighborhoods Day to the community. Yeah, you know, a lot of work gets done, of course, on, on Neighborhoods Day in the city, but it's also just this nice way to connect with people in your neighborhood and with people in other neighborhoods. Uh, and and I feel like that's the part that that will feel the most different uh, this year. Yeah, but, but, but a lot of the groups that have registered, uh, they have uh, taken this phrase, stay safe, create your space to heart. So a lot of them, they're, they're moving their events uh, to small events. They're having the school supply giveaways where uh, people can drive up. Uh, we have one organization, uh, Yusuf Shakur, and they're gonna have a truck. Normally they have a big event with hundreds of people coming to one place. They're gonna have a truck driving around the city, dropping off school supplies. People can actually register to get free school supplies. Uh, some, one group is doing an ice cream social on the front porch. Uh, some groups, myself and my other life, you may know I'm a musician, and so I'm from my neighborhood, I'm gonna do a driveway blues concert. <laughs> so, and other people are doing other things as well. So I think it demonstrates how much people wanna feel connected and feel together, even in these very challenging times. Yeah. Uh, what are you hearing from neighborhoods, uh, neighborhood groups and community groups about their needs at this time and how they might look uh, look different than they would in years where there isn't a pandemic? Well, the most, the, the main thing is people want to be safe. The main thing is people want to be safe. And that is, in terms of neighborhoods, it was our biggest issue that we grappled with because we don't want anybody getting sick. Yeah. Uh, I have lost, and I know you have lost, people that have been very close to me in this pandemic. This is not a, this is not a game. It takes people out, young and old, and, and in many respects, it's terrifying because none of us have ever been through something like this. So I think the neighbors themselves, the hardest thing is to continue to do what they do to continue to serve in the face of this pandemic. We did earlier this year, we did our own survey on how groups are being affected in uh, community groups, and many, many of them are facing funding challenges, the volunteer opportunities. We have groups that traditionally volunteer are not comfortable doing it this year and getting the funding. A lot of funders who might give you money are putting their funding in other places or more directly dealing with the pandemic. So um, that's the challenge. How do we serve in the face of all this, uh, these, this, these health concerns? And it's been a challenge. So everybody has kind of had to kind of navigate their way 
in the rise of Detroit is no different. We've had to figure this thing out and are trying to still figure it out because going forward, this thing is not going to disappear in a month or two. It's going to be here for the foreseeable future. And we've all got to figure out how we can cope, challenge, and navigate it in, in this, this situation. Yeah. Uh, as I said earlier, the work uh, that happens on Neighborhoods Day is also really key. That seems like it should, uh, it should hold this year, that, that people should be able to, to do a lot of the work that, uh, that takes place. Yeah, we have groups. We have, uh, we have again, uh, we have about 50% of our registration groups are groups that are going to do cleanup and beautification projects, small projects uh, in their neighborhood around the house. Um, uh, because again, traditionally in May in the city of Detroit, you have Motor City Makeover, which we didn't have in May. And now the city is in July is going is, is doing it. But nevertheless, a lot of people get didn't get a chance to do a lot of the things that they might have done earlier this year. So the beautification is, is very important. And fortunately, we have some... Uh, Sponsors that have given allowed us to uh, to give given us materials to help us. Meyer's been a great help, uh, being our title sponsor, providing uh, hand sanitizers. The United Way of Southeastern Michigan has given us 2,000 face masks, uh, again to emphasize safety. And so, um, it is very tough. But the you know, the spirit of this city, for all we've been through, it is still in the heart, still beats strongly. And people want to serve. They don't want to curl up in a field position, just say, oh, there's nothing we can do. If anything, they're, they're part and upon rising to the occasion mm -hmm. and they want to get involved. And that's what's most gratifying is that, you know, people want to do this. They want to show how much love they have for the community, how much work and basically show for their care they have for their neighbors. That's what Neighborhoods Today is really about. And that's what we're going to demonstrate on August 1st all over the city of Detroit. Yeah. Uh, I also wonder if you can talk about the support systems uh, that exist for community groups in the city and whether they are strained uh, at this point because uh, we see so much more demand for things uh, than we did before. Are community groups making it through this with the kind of support that they need? Well, every, everybody is, what's the term on, uh, you hear on the street, everybody is hustling. Yeah, everybody right. is hustling, kind of finding their way. We just, uh, uh, recently partnered, uh, had a conversation with the mayor's office in the department of neighborhoods. They're going to provide support for the groups that pick up uh, trash and those type of things and collect it and to make sure that they partner with us to pick up all the stuff that's collected as debris on uh, neighborhoods today. And even the city is very strapped, again, because they're short staffed. So it's a challenge all the way across the board, but uh, we're hanging in there. Uh, people are finding a way uh, to get it done. Uh, I know that the registration deadline was July 15, but uh, if people want to get involved, they still can just go to arisedetroit.org, right? Right. And you'll still find some groups that are looking for volunteers. Again, the volunteer activities are emphasizing that people are, these are going to be with protective materials, with social distancing, because we that's paramount. But yeah, people can go to our website, arisedetroit.org. All the events that are registered are on there. Some indicate they want volunteers. So you definitely can still do that. But again, make sure you're well protected and uh, certainly come out because these groups need support. They need support in the help of your neighbor. That's what this is about. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.